To proceed with retinoscopy, you should sit a comfortable arm's length away, holding the retinoscope in one hand and sitting as far away as possible while still being able to adjust the controls on the foropter. The distance between the foropter and the retinoscope is called the working distance and is usually about two-thirds of a meter or 67 centimeters. During retinoscopy, you will sometimes move forward or backward, but should always finish up at the normal working distance of approximately two-thirds of a meter. When the neutralization procedure is finished, the eye will be focused exactly at the working distance. Then, by changing the spherical portion of the refractive correction by one and a half diopters in the minus direction, the eye's focus is moved out to infinity, or, practically speaking, to the visual acuity chart on the far wall. So, establishing a constant working distance is important. Retinoscopy is more sensitive to small refractive errors at longer working distances. If your arms are short, however, and you have to sit closer than two-thirds of a meter, you may find later that you have to compensate for your working distance by changing the sphere 1.75 diopters in the minus direction instead of one and a half diopters to give best visual acuity. The retinoscope should be held with one hand, using the thumb and forefinger to hold the sleeve in the up position and to rotate the sleeve when necessary. The rim of the scope should be steadied against the brow, with the examiner looking through the peephole at the eye to be retinoscoped. As with direct ophthalmoscopy, the examiner's right eye is used to retinoscope the patient's right eye, and the examiner's left eye is used to retinoscope the patient's left eye. With the room lights dimmed, the blurred streak of light, the intercept, is swept across the pupil. Dr. Guyton comments. The intercept is always swept at right angles to its length. If it is oriented vertically, it is swept horizontally. If oriented horizontally, it is swept vertically. And if oriented obliquely, it is swept obliquely at right angles to the orientation of the streak. In this vertical orientation, we are actually testing the power in the horizontal meridian, but we often say that we are neutralizing the vertical meridian. We should be saying that we are neutralizing the streak in the vertical meridian. Only small sweeps are necessary, just enough to detect the direction of movement of the reflex. Notice that this reflex moves in the same direction as the intercept. This is called with movement. In another situation, we may see this reflex, one which moves in the opposite direction to the intercept. This is called against movement. At the point of neutralization, the reflex looks like this. It doesn't move at all. The pupil suddenly fills with light as the intercept crosses it. Once neutralization of the schematic eye is mastered, it is time to turn to real patients with real eyes. The foropter is first placed in a comfortable position for the patient with both eyes open and the interpupillary distance set to center the patient's eyes in the apertures. The lens dials are set to zero cylinder and plus one and a half diopters sphere on both sides. The plus one and a half diopters of sphere place the emetrope's far point at the normal working distance. Also, this plus sphere power makes most patients myopic fogging the distance fixation target and tending to relax accommodation. If the patient turns out to be more than one and a half diopters hyperopic, more plus sphere may be necessary for proper fogging. Learn to retinoscope the patient's right eye with your right eye and the patient's left eye with your left eye. This allows the patient to look past your ear with the eye not being retinoscoped at a small fixation light at the end of the room. You need to be as close to the patient's visual axis as possible for the best accuracy. And if the patient does not have strabismus, using the other eye for fixation is the best way to achieve the proper alignment. Retinoscoping off-axis more than 15 degrees introduces significant unwanted astigmatism. Keep both of your eyes open if possible. It's easier to do this if the room is quite dark. The best fixation target is a small light. A projected letter can stimulate accommodation, and large bright fixation targets produce annoying reflections in the corrective lenses. There is no way to avoid entirely the reflections of the retinoscope light in the foropter lenses, and one simply has to move slightly to one side or the other to see past the reflections. 
Should dilating drops be used for retinoscopy? Probably not. The natural pupil is the one the patient ordinarily uses for seeing, and optical aberrations uncovered by dilating the pupil can cause confusing reflexes and even yield a different refraction. For starting out in retinoscopy, though, you will probably appreciate the more obvious reflexes obtained with the pupil dilated. If dilating drops are used, the patient can be instructed to look directly at the retinoscope light, with the other eye occluded. Thank you.